Beneath a city car park, scientists uncovered the bones of a lost king. When they solved one riddle, another shattered everything historians thought they knew. AI has revealed secrets in King Richard III's DNA that even experts cannot explain, suggesting royal lies and a lineage tainted beyond recognition. The truth hidden in those bones could rewrite English history. But just what has AI found, and, and why are scientists so unnerved? A cold morning in Leicester, 2012. Machines grind to a halt as archaeologist Richard Buckley and his team pause at the edge of a parking lot. Beneath layers of modern asphalt and crushed stone, they uncover the outline of a vanished world. The buried walls and cloisters of Greyfriars Priory, lost since the reign of the Tudors. Trowels scrape against soil, exposing fragments of medieval tile and the faint trace of a grave. Then, a skeleton emerges from the earth, twisted by severe scoliosis, its skull bearing the scars of violence. The spine curves in a way that matches chroniclers' descriptions of Richard III, maligned for centuries as the hunchbacked king. Buckley's crew works methodically, logging every detail. The grave's position, the orientation of the body, the depth of the burial. Each layer of soil is sifted for clues. The bones show unmistakable signs of trauma. Sharp cuts to the skull, a puncture at the base, blade wounds to the pelvis. Consistent with the brutal accounts of Richard's death at Bosworth. The grave sits in a choir, not a royal tomb, but hastily dug, shallow and unmarked. Chain of custody protocols begin immediately. The remains are sealed and transferred to a climate-controlled lab. Every step is documented, every sample logged. The question now is not just who lies here, but whether science can speak for history. The dig has delivered a candidate. Proof will depend on what can be drawn from these ancient bones. In the sterile calm of the laboratory, a single molar is chosen from the ancient skull. The tooth is prized for its dense enamel, a fortress against centuries of decay and contamination. Under the watch of geneticist Turi King, the sample is a processed in a clean room environment, every surface sterilized, every movement logged. The goal is simple. Extract mitochondrial DNAA, the genetic thread, passed down through the maternal line, unbroken from mother to child across generations. Mitochondrial DNAA, a offers a unique advantage. Unlike nuclear DNA, a, it resists the ravages of time, surviving where other genetic material fails. This resilience makes it the gold standard for ancient identification. The sequence from the skeleton is compared to that of Michael Ibsen, a living descendant of Richard III's sister. The results are striking. A perfect match. Every base pair aligns. Every marker falls into place. The odds of this match occurring by chance are less than one in a hundred thousand. Independent laboratories repeat the analysis, each confirming the same result. The probability of false identification shrinks to near zero. 99.999% certainty, a level rarely achieved in forensic science. For Ibsen, the discovery is more than a scientific curiosity. It is a living connection to a king, a bridge across five centuries. For Turi King and her team, the match stands as proof that the bones from the Leicester grave are, beyond reasonable doubt, those of Richard III. The maternal line has spoken, and the evidence is unassailable. Y-chromosome analysis brought an unexpected complication. The remains carried haplogroup G2A, a genetic signature found in only a small fraction of European men today. Yet, every living male line descendant tested from the Somerset family publicly documented as tracing their paternal ancestry back to Edward III, carried a completely different haplogroup, R1b, the most common in Western Europe. The genetic gulf between G2a and R1b cannot be bridged by mutation or chance. It points to a full replacement of the paternal line at some point after Edward III. The timeline covers 19 generations, each with its own risk of a break in the chain. Historical studies estimate that, for every generation, the chance of a so-called non-paternity event, a father recorded in the family tree who was not the biological parent, hovers around 1 to 2%.
Over 19 generations, the cumulative probability of at least one such event rises above 25%. The Y chromosome data do not single out the precise moment of divergence, nor do they name the man or motive. But the contradiction stands, stark and statistical. Male line testers become markers on a map of uncertainty, their DNA exposing a fracture beneath centuries of royal record keeping. The evidence does not accuse, but it refuses to align. The mystery deepens, and the accepted lineage bends under the weight of probability. Medieval England offered its own set of explanations for broken bloodlines, none of them rare, all of them deeply woven into the fabric of noble life. Historian Helen Castor describes a society where fosterage and wardship often place children in the homes of distant kin or powerful patrons, blurring the lines of paternity and inheritance. In the Somerset branch of the Plantagenet pedigree, records show periods of guardianship and extended absence, moments when children were raised far from their biological fathers. Such circumstances could easily mask a misattributed father, whether by design or by the simple chaos of war and politics. Adoption, too, was not always formal, but could be a matter of necessity or strategy. A widow might remarry, her children folded into a new household and assumed as heirs by a stepfather. Chroniclers of the era rarely questioned the legitimacy of noble sons unless political motives demanded it. Castor notes that even in the best kept genealogies, the assumption of biological continuity was often more hopeful than certain. The Somerset line, uh, which provides the living male line descendants for modern DNA testing, is particularly exposed to these vulnerabilities. Its pedigree crosses generations marked by civil war, disputed inheritances, and shifting alliances. Each link in the chain is a point of potential uncertainty, a place where the official record may have quietly diverged from genetic reality. These scenarios, drawn from the lived experience of the medieval elite, offer plausible pathways for the break now revealed by DNA. The story of Richard III's lineage is, in this light, as much about the social history of the Middle Ages as it is about the science of genetics. A high-throughput sequencer hums as raw data from the ancient tooth flows into the university's secure server. The dataset, labeled SRR3922176, is parsed by a new generation of algorithms trained to spot the faintest irregularities. Within hours, the machine delivers its verdict. Anomaly scores spike across a band of the Y chromosome reads. The flagged interval falls between 0.48 and 0.68 probability, far outside the expected range, for a single unbroken male lineage. Mixed allele clusters appear in low coverage regions, where authentic ancient sequences should be uniform. The AI's posterior plots, dense with flagged reads, suggest a complex signal, one that cannot be explained by normal degradation or sequencing error. Every flagged segment is logged, each with its own confidence score and timestamp. The anomaly is not a stray artifact or a single rogue marker, but a pattern that repeats through independent runs. The machine's output lands on the desk of the lead analyst, its findings impossible to ignore. Eska Willerslev, a pioneer in ancient genomics, voices a warning that echoes through the field. Warning. When algorithms trained on modern genomes are let loose on medieval DNA, they risk seeing patterns where only noise exists. The specter of overfitting, where a model mistakes random damage for ancestral signal, looms over every AI-driven claim. At the heart of the debate lies the reference panel itself. Most AI tools rely on modern genetic databases, but ancient populations carried variants now lost to time. If the panel is skewed, the output can misclassify a legitimate ancient marker as contamination, or worse, invent a break in the bloodline that never happened. Bioethicist Sarah Chan draws from broader debates in genomic research and calls for full release of the raw BAM files, the digital backbone of the analysis, 
so that any claim can be independently tested and scrutinized. Without open data, every anomaly flagged by the machine remains a black box. The stakes are no longer just technical. The authority of AI in rewriting royal ancestry is questioned, not just for its scientific limits, but for the ethical responsibility it carries. In the absence of consensus, the field stands at a crossroads, caught between the promise of new discovery and the risk of misleading history itself. Today, AI probes secrets even the crown could not shield. As algorithms outpace tradition, every genome becomes a new frontier, and every royal myth faces its reckoning. The past is no longer fixed. In the code of our ancestors, history rewrites itself, one sequence at a time, 